action. Welcome to my first physics class, Introduction to Physics, and for some persons, Reintroduction to Physics. A lot of persons are actually beefing physics. For some, no hope, physics is difficult. So I will try my best to reintroduce you to physics so that at least you and physics can be eating in the same plate and enjoying life together. Physics is a very nice guy anyway. And the truth is, you can't run away from physics forever. Physics is present in every action in the universe. Physics has no limit. This is why sometimes it seems difficult because it doesn't have limit. And we'll be going through this content. Now, when you meet somebody, the first thing you ask is, what is your name? And tell me about yourself. Now, physics, we know that's the name. Now, what is physics? Physics is the study of matter in relation to energy. It studies matter and energy and how they relate. Matter and energy and how they relate. Now, the universe is made up of two things. The universe is made up of matter and energy. So can we now say that physics is the study of the universe? Because it's studying almost everything that makes up the universe. Now, since physics studies matter and energy, we can't go into physics without knowing what matter is and without knowing what energy is. Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So you can say anything that is heavy, anything that has size that you can see, that you can quantify and occupies space. Now, if you have to think about it, check around you. What has mass? and occupy space around. You discover that it's almost everything you see around. This board has, uh, this marker has mass and because occupies space. The laptop, fan, cars and a lot of stuff you see around. They have mass and they occupy space. And even air, the air you breathe, it occupies space. Water occupies space. If I should give you uh, one bag of pure water, you notice that it it's heavy, okay, and it occupies space. We can put it somewhere. So that's what matter talks about: space, region. So since matter is anything that has, and there's a difference between uh, mass and weight. Mass and weight. <coughs> mass is the quantity of matter in the body, or in layman language, how heavy something is on its own. So, for example, if you have 2 kg, that is mass. Let's say rice, 2 kg. The weight is the mass times gravity. This gravity is a force that brings objects down. When you throw this up, it comes down. So, that force bringing all objects down is <coughs> gravity. Now, gravity is different in different places so let's say on earth we are or around us gravity is approximately around 9.8 meter per second square this implies that a body or an object with mass 2 kg which is this m we have weight of weight w equals mass 2 times gravity, 9.8 meter per second square. So that is the mass of this body. 
So if you multiply 2 times 9.8, you get the mass you, uh, weight of the body. So and the unit is kilogram meter per second square or Newton. We're really going through all these things when we we'll start calculation. So in definition, you can say mass is the quantity of matter a body possesses, while weight is the earth pull on a body. Okay, that's uh okay. Before we go back to matter, what is energy? Energy is a property of matter, it's a type of matter, it's the ability or capacity to do work. Energy is the ability or capacity to do work. Energy doesn't have mass. And we have two types of energy. We have kinetic energy, kinetic and um, potential energy. So why potential energy is the energy a body possesses due to the position or the height? Potential kinetic energy is the energy a body possesses due to motion, due to work. We'll get back into that and solve questions on it. And there is law of conservation of energy. It says that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can change from one form to another. For example, okay, let's say a, 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 a bulb now, it gives energy, it produces light, right? But after some time, you discover that it begins to produce heat. That means energy is being converted from electrical energy in that light to heat energy. So there are different ways energy is being converted. Okay? That's another topic also. Now, <coughs> matter exists in different form. And this is what we call states of matter. <coughs> this is not grammar. This is not English. It's something you see around. Now, you know water. <laughs> if I should drop a stone here, then water. Then, okay, let's say smoke. Now, you know smoke. You know water. And you know smoke. Stone, water, smoke. Even as a layman, or as somebody in the village, as a farmer, or somebody who has not been to school, you notice that these things are different. When you hold the stone, it's solid, it's strong. At the force between them is strong. Then water, you can dip your hand in it. You see, and stone has shape, but water doesn't have shape. If you have something like this, a cup like this, and pour water on it, the water will change and meant to take the shape of this cup. If you have a cup like this, and pour water on it, the water will adjust and take the shape of this cup. If you have a basin like this, something like this, and pour water on it, it will adjust to take the shape of this. But water, you can touch it, you can fetch it. It has volume. But this smoke is different. You notice that it has a, a irregular motion, random motion. Then the force between them is not strong. At least you can dip your hand in water, but at least you will feel something when you are dipping your hand inside water. But smoke, you can use your hand to cut it. <coughs> so you will really feel that much impact. However, you can compress it, you can put it in something or in the gas, you can compress them. Now, these are examples of the three states of matter. Matter exists as a solid. Example, stone. This bo uh, uh, white board marker and even the board. It exists as a liquid, water, kerosene, fear. It exists as a gas, air, smoke. That's what my, uh, states of matter talks about. 
Now, in this state, there's something called change of state. You can change matter from one state to another. And anytime I mention matter, just be picturing things around you, the things you see, water, chair, stone, sand, picture them. Don't picture something big or grammar. No. So, this solid, liquid, and gas, you can change them. For example, when you water, let's say water for example, is liquid. Now, you put it in the freezer, and the freezer is working. After some time, what do you notice? It becomes strong. You can't really pour it. It now has a shape. It's not thick. In that case, it has changed from liquid to solid. And what do you say? You say this water has frozen. It's freeze. So this is called what? Freezing. Now that same block, remove it and keep it somewhere that is not cold. What would you notice? After some times again, it changes to liquid. And you say, ah, the block don't melt to who? Why allow this thing melt? So in that case, it's called melting. Now, it has melted. Now, uh, solid can also, uh, can, liquid can turn to uh, solid, solid can turn to liquid. Now, when you take the water, when you take the water, or water, and boil, before you know, after some time, the kettle can even get empty. It goes empty. What has happened? Oh, the water has disappeared. So that means, you've boiled it, it has turned to gas. So let's say from boiling itself, boiling or evaporation, it turns to gas. Okay? Now, when you are boiling water, that evaporation from the kettle or from your pot, when you put your hand, you notice that the gas enters your hand, it's evaporating into your hand. It's evaporates, evaporation, it evaporates into your hand. Remove your hand and check for some time. You notice that it will begin to form water. That heat or what you call it. In that case, it has condensed. It's called condensation. Now, this is the one that will surprise you. Do you know that solid can change to gas directly? Without passing through liquid state, it won't turn to liquid first. It can turn to gas directly. For example, camphor. When you put camphor in your clothes, before you know, it disappears to gas. And your clothes, it doesn't get wet. In that case, a solid has changed to gas. This is called sublimation. Now, gas can also change to solid. This is called re sublimation. So it's called so change change of state. Okay? Now, there is a belief that matter is made up of particles. Why some also believe that matter is made up of waves? That's why we have particle nature of matter and we have wave nature of matter. Some believe that matter is made up of particles, that's particle nature. Why they also believe that matter has wave nature so the belief that matter is made up of particles is called particle nature of matter so the particles matter is made up of are 
atoms molecules and what ions these are particles that matter is made up of now think about all these things we've done so far check how it affects you and check whether you follow then come back to my next lecture where i will explain these particles very well because i need time to explain it the way you get it i'll explain these particles atoms uh, molecules and ions i'll explain kinetic theory brownian motion thanks for watching subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this